I thank you all. All right, you're just listening in there, Vice President Kamala Harris at this, uh, giving that concession speech up there on the stage with Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff. We saw Minnesota Governor Tim Walls in the crowd as well, saying, quote, do not despair. Also noting that it's okay to be sad, okay to be disappointed, but the crowd there coming back after a late night at Howard University at her campus there at the alma mater in Washington, D.C. Of course, we did not hear from her last night. She also talked about she did speak on the phone with now President-elect Donald Trump earlier today talking about the peaceful transfer of power and her effort there uh, to hand that off as uh, Biden and Harris will leave office uh, in January. So we're monitoring all of the latest here on Live Now from Fox on this now, the day after the election, the day after Trump secures a second term there in the White House, a second time uh, being the president. All right, let's continue on. I want to bring in Andrew Kraft one more time here. Uh, what do we make of the speech? Because there was a lot of talk about what was going to be said. What did you yeah. hear? What was your biggest takeaway? So I just want to set the stage, too, uh, because I think the timing is important. Uh, this came almost 16 hours uh, after we heard from her campaign advisor, Cedric Mitch Richmond, uh, very, very early this morning at 1244 a.m. So 16 hours almost is a very long time to craft a message, to craft a speech like we just heard there. Uh, there were some uh, criticisms that we hadn't heard from her sooner, uh, but now you all uh, have just listened to her. Uh, obviously, she mentioned the former president saying uh, that she did concede the race. Uh, just want to remind our viewers uh, something that uh, Trump did not afford the Biden-Harris ticket uh, back in 2020, uh, neither a concession nor a promise. Uh, to ensure a peaceful transfer uh, of power there. I was going to ask uh, Casey, uh, our previous guest before Harris spoke, Andy, come January 20th, 2025, um, what will Harris do? Will she have a future in politics? And there were some echoes of what she might do. Uh, she said, and she often quotes this line in her campaign rallies and speeches, her final line of those speeches, when we fight, we win. But she said, sometimes when we fight, we may not have won last night, but we will win down the road if we continue to fight. So you heard echoes of that and hallmarks of that, that she will continue the fight, whatever that may be. You can kind of parse the language there. You know, if Republicans do have unified government with the House, the Senate, and the presidency here, uh, you know, possibly Kamala Harris can, you know, become the vanguard, if you will, uh, for some of the, you know, democratic resistance to whatever a Trump Vance ticket uh, you know, imposes at the executive level or, you know, with a unified government uh, on Capitol Hill here. So that stuck out to me, uh, that she is going to kind of carry the torch for whatever uh, that movement might look like as somewhat of a bulwark against uh, the incoming Trump-Vance administration here. Uh, and you heard there, there were some boos when she first mentioned former President Donald Trump here. Uh, she says, do not despair. She says the fight is not over. Um, but she also was very specific uh, about the campaign that she ran, uh, saying she was very proud of the way she ran her campaign. She noted in a very abbreviated time frame, 107 days, possibly some you know, implicit acknowledgement that she didn't have a lot of time to cobble all of this together, and this was the final result. So those are just some of my uh, kind of reactions, responses uh, to what we just heard there. Uh, but the question still remains that I have, what will Kamala Harris do uh, after she leaves the White House? I think that's an open question right yeah, now. Yeah, that is a very different and interesting question that you asked, talking about that, maybe what the future holds, because she talked about her past, talking about her uh, past as a prosecutor as well. And it's also interesting because one of the strongest criticisms against Kamala Harris was her time during the 2020 presidential election cycle where she did not sure. make it very far and also the time that there were no really delegates being cast for her in favor of that. She just immediately uh, took over the campaign that was left behind by Joe Biden after that disastrous dis debate moving up to it. I also want to ask you because we heard a lot in that speech about do not despair obviously it's a time to be sad and disappointed but also what we did not hear there was not necessarily a ton of calls for unity as we noted as we were watching this speech is that notable to you that what we did not hear from what she said that was we were kind of uh, watching and waiting for maybe that word there I didn't hear the word unity you heard the word joy though uh, yeah. the joyfulness of the campaign was a common theme 
throughout, especially in the run-up and in the wake of the DNC convention there uh, in Chicago. Um, but she was essentially, you know, conceding, telling her supporters they may feel defeated, disappointed, sad right now. Uh, but there was, you know, some hallmarks uh, of hope in that rhetoric there, where she was saying, "Do not despair." The fight continues, uh, both you know explicitly and implicitly, inwardly and outwardly. There, um, but she had a pretty declarative message, saying that uh, you know whatever the Trump Vance administration uh, appears to be uh, or looks like right now, kind of in utero, that she will be uh, a voice, an outspoken voice um, against whatever may materialize uh, once Donald Trump takes the White House. Uh, again, for a second time, of course, not consecutively. Uh, that's its own kind of historical footnote after last night. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. Of course, she uh, mentioned uh, President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden, uh, thanked them for their support throughout this process here. Um, but you, you could see uh, the emotion in her voice. Her voice cracked right at the top there a couple of times. But also some, you know, declarative resolve in her voice as well with that line, you know, the fight continues, the fight goes on here, uh, kind of echoing some of the language and, and rhetoric from the late Congressman John Lewis, uh, say, saying essentially um, that the good fight is a hard fight. And so uh, those were just some of the kind of threads and strands that, that I picked out there, uh, Harris speaking, joining with uh, her husband, Doug Emhoff. You saw members of her family, Ella and Emhoff in the audience, Cole Emhoff in the audience, and. Uh, Tim and Gwen Walls' children as well. So uh, a lot of Democratic heavy hitters there uh, on the campus of Howard University for this. Uh, and lest we not get ahead of ourselves, uh, Andy, a lot of people are now talking about what that 2028 Democratic bench may look like that seems a far ways away from now, does it not? Yeah, it feels like uh, forever from now after the last four or five months that we've been having here on Live Now from Fox. So we'll get to that uh, in just a few years. Kraft, thank you so much for breaking it all down here as we're continuing to have fallout reaction from election night. But thanks again. Thank you. All right, let's continue on because, of course, we're still monitoring this shot there uh, on the campus of Howard University. Just some of these uh, instant reactions. You can see people crying, but also people dancing. So a mixed bag of emotions following this concession speech. And like uh, Kraft noted, some 16 hours after we last heard from that Harris campaign uh, on that campus uh, at Howard University talking about they will not throw their hands up. It is time to roll up their sleeves and get to work. Uh, maybe referencing uh, her slogan, uh, when we fight, we win, talking about it being more of a long play uh, in terms of not securing this victory as Trump taking it early in the morning at 5.30 uh, a.m. Eastern time. But uh, plenty to get to here on Live Now from Fox. We'll hear a different reaction. We'll be talking about what went wrong or what maybe more so went right for Trump this time around. So a lot to get into, a lot to dig into, a lot to discuss about the stock market, a lot to dig into immigration, the economy, plenty to discuss here regarding what happened last night in the election. There is still plenty to talk about in terms of the Senate as the Republicans did take the majority in that. The House still very much up for grabs. Don't know if it will be an all red uh, Congress with uh, the House and the Senate both going in favor of the Republicans. Uh, but we'll learn more about that over the next coming weeks. All right, I'm Andy Mack here on Live Now from Fox. Let's slide away for a quick two minute break.